Hello people, welcome you all. My name is Daniel. I am MVP in Connected System Developer and I'm here for our our third lesson about Workflow Foundation for ASP.NET developers. So let's review our series. First we started with an introduction to Workflow Foundation for ASP.NET developers. Then we had a lesson about developing custom activities. Now we are going to we are going to learn about creating a workflow uh, to model our page flow solution. After that, we're going to develop a runtime wrapper class in the next lesson and finally finish our page flow solution. Our, stu our today agenda is understanding a state machine workflow. What is a state, ma what a state machine is? Uh, why using a state machine? And then we are going to learn uh, how Workflow Foundation deals with a state machine workflow. After that, we are going to learn about the state activity. And finally, we are going to finish with a demo working with a state machine workflow. So to understand why we have a, a state machine workflow foundation, let's understand what a state machine is. So basically, and obviously, a uh, state machine is composed by states and the state machine can have just one uh, one active state for each time and in one state you can define transitions to other states and how how the transition occurs uh, you define an event and the event defines the new state so in this picture we have the initial state so a uh, state machine always must have an initial state. So from our initial state, that is state 1, we can go just to state 2. And from state 2, we can go just to state 3. From state 3, we can go to state 2 or state 4. If we go back to state 2, we can keep in a loop from state 2 to state 3. State 2, state 3 and we don't know when it's gonna stop the event defines if the state 3 is going to state 4 if it goes to state 4 then just can go to state 5 and the state 5 is our final state so we always need a final state too so when to use a state machine workflow the recommended scenarios when you have a human workflow, probably you will have to use a state machine workflow. What is a human workflow? When the workflow have to wait for a human interaction, for instance, uh, approval of a document. Uh, when the workflow is controlled by external events, let's say approval of the document again, the manager have have got a click in the button to to invoke the event and when it's hard to predict all the paths for instance we don't know when our in the last slide from state 2 to state 3 it can keep in a loop you don't know when it's gonna stop so it's hard to predict when it will it would go to state 4 so those are the recommended scenarios to use a state machine. So let's understand our state machine workflow. How Workflow Foundation deals with a state machine workflow. So, as I said before, a state machine has states. In each state, we define an event that, that defines the new state. And to, to put this event, you must use this event-driven activity. Uh, in Workflow Foundation, a state is an activity, and this event-driven is an activity too. And in each event-driven activity, we have some decision, some processing, and then we must have another activity that is called set state. This is this activity defines the new state of the workflow. So here, from this state, 
I can go to the next one using the set state activity. As I said before, the state, acti the state is an activity in Workflow Foundation. So let's understand quickly the how the state activity works. The state activity has a state initial initialization, and then you can put uh, in an event-driven activity. And in this event-driven activity, you can define the new state. And after that, we have a state finalization. We are going to understand better in our demo. So today we are going to have a quick theory part, and we are going to work more. The demo will take uh, longer. So let's start our demo. So let's start our demo. I have here my solution, the solution we are using for our demos. And now we are going to add a state machine workflow. So just come here, a state machine workflow. I call it page flow. And just add. And here I have a, a state machine workflow. It's new for us. We just for to this point we just used uh, the sequential workflow. Now we are gonna learn about the state machine workflow. So here I have a, a, a initial state that the workflow foundation creates for me. And if I click and select the workflow and press F4 to see the properties, let's check what I have here. I have the initial state name that is the page flow initial state and I have here another prepared completed state name if I compute here it's okay because I have my initial state but now I would drag another activity look here that I have some different activities from the sequential workflow I have a set state activity, state activity, state initialization activity, state finalization activity. I will drag a state activity and I will call it page flow final state. And here I'm gonna set that my final state is this one. So okay. Now I have I have my initial and final states that I that's what I need to start creating my workflow. Now I will drag another other states that I need to model my application. I will create a state machine to buy a product in a website. So I will need it a state called order order created I also need a state called payment type selected when you select a payment type we can go to different states credit card selected or I can go to a state called bank draft created and from this state I just go to Shipping, 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 address defined, and then it's the end of my workflow. 